I'm Chance Dorland, and this is The Docket, a new weekly interview program covering law and crime in San Antonio from ExpressNews.com, brought to you by the law offices of Pat Maloney. As I am every week, I'm joined now by San Antonio Express News courts reporter Elizabeth Zavala, who has been very busy this last week. Today, we are going to be discussing an update on the case we talked about in our previous episode of Gabriel Moreno. It's a murder case with um, a long history, and we're also going to get some new information about a different case involving Mark Benavides, uh, a former San Antonio attorney slated to go on trial at the end of the month on accusations of having sex with female clients. So we'll get to that here in a moment. But Elizabeth, great to have you here on the program. Let's start with our update on the Gabrielle Moreno murder case. This was in trial last week, correct? Yes. And it's great to be back with you, Chance. Um, I wanted to just set the record straight a little bit. Um, Gabriel Moreno went on trial. His cousin is Daniel Moreno Lopez, who I had, um, both of these men were actually set to go on trial when this case uh, started being heard last week. And uh, because I had covered uh, Daniel Moreno Lopez's case before, I uh, was thinking that he would be coming back this week, but in all actuality, it was his cousin. So I just wanted to set the record straight there because Daniel Moreno Lopez is still going to have his day in court. It just hasn't been this week. So just wanted to update you about this really incredible trial that um, I have been covering. Of course, to update you, uh, this was likely a drug deal that went bad. These two men, Jose Luis Menchaca uh, was beaten with baseball bats. And uh, then what we learned this week, he was actually asphyxiated, uh, suffocated with a pillow and a plastic bag before he was dismembered and his limbs burned on a barbecue pit. This uh, happened in 2014. And we had some really compelling testimony this week that I just wanted to talk with you about. Um, On Wednesday, a man who was there uh, and saw the beating occur testified. He broke down on the witness stand and described the first time he saw uh, the bloody torso of uh, Jose Luis Menchaca uh, when he got to the house, uh, he had, uh, gone to the house with his girlfriend and they, when they got there, they saw that, uh, Jose Luis Menchaca was basically bound at his ankles and wrists and he had duct tape on his mouth and he was bleeding from the face. And, um, you know, they saw blood on the walls, on the couch, on the floor. And uh, there had been a history with Daniel Lopez Moreno and uh, his cousin Gabriel. And he said that he was afraid to call police and let them know what he had seen there. This witness is uh, named Dennis Austin. And he actually is engaged to be married to a cousin of Gabriel Moreno. So there's, you know, there's some family that is, uh, you know, family relations that's coming out in this trial now uh, as it relates to um, all of the players involved. So So uh, Austin told the jury that he and his fiance had gone to the home here in San Antonio on Hillwood Drive on September 30th, 2014. And when they arrived there, uh, Dennis Austin told the jury that it looked like a horror movie because of the violence that had happened uh, in the back bedroom where uh, Menchaca was beaten, apparently by. 
Daniel Moreno Lopez and his cousin Gabriel. Uh, that was testimony that came out not only um, from Dennis Austin, but also the next day from the girlfriend of the victim herself, who actually was held against her will. And uh, after she witnessed her boyfriend being beaten, uh, she says, by the two cousins while she was there. So uh, this case has taken some very interesting and tragic turns because um, she talked about, you know, just hearing people talk about a barbecue. And it wasn't until days later that she realized that the barbecue that they were talking about uh, was actually her boyfriend's limbs that were being grilled on a barbecue pit. It was very, uh, very terrifying testimony. The jurors were uh, riveted and uh, just, you know, wide-eyed while this testimony was taking place. We should have a couple of more days of testimony Again, this trial has been going on for about a week now, and it was anticipated it would last for about two weeks. Elizabeth, uh, any details about the defense? I mean, this all seems pretty damning evidence-wise. Um, would the defense just try to have the the lowest possible sentence for something like this as opposed to actually having a, you know, at this point, denial of, of everything that we've just heard? Well, that is very interesting. The, it, it's really kind of hard to tell right now. Like with when uh, Menchaca's girlfriend um, testified on Thursday, a lot was trying to be made of the fact that she admitted on the witness stand that she's a heroin addict. And uh, a lot of times when, when that comes out, you know, another side will try to really concentrate on on that person. This woman's name is Sylvia Flores. Um, she admitted that she was a heroin addict again, and um, that she also had a history of theft convictions. And, you know, it was the way that testimony was going um, and the questioning, you know, cross-examination from the defense, they were trying to just delve more into her past as far as, you know, uh, anticipating that her theft convictions had everything to do with the drug habit and the fact that her boyfriend, the deceased, the victim, was uh, a you know, this case is, is, is about retaliation, really. Uh, they, uh, the prosecutors are alleging that Menchaca was killed because of an altercation that he had with Daniel Moreno Lopez. And uh, that altercation apparently had to do with a drug deal. Lopez apparently was stabbed in the back, literally, uh, allegedly by Menchaca. And it came out this week in testimony that after that altercation, uh, Lopez might have shot Menchaca with a gun. However, the injuries that both of these men uh, received from that, from those uh, instances were not such that they needed to go to the hospital. So uh, it's really kind of hard to tell how serious those things were, but apparently it was serious enough for this particular situation to have occurred that, you know, someone was, was beaten possibly nearly to death and then asphyxiated and then dismembered and parts of their body grilled on a barbecue pit. 
Well, Elizabeth, yeah, it's it's almost hard to come up with something more to ask you about after hearing all that. But obviously, um, this trial has not ended yet, and uh, there might be perhaps another update in uh, next week's episode. Um, and uh, we'll, of course, uh, talk with you about that uh, at that time. You're listening to The Docket, a new weekly interview program covering law and crime in San Antonio from ExpressNews.com, brought to you by our sponsor, the law offices of Pat Maloney. Let's uh, now move on to our final case for today. Um, I mentioned this at the top of the episode, the Mark Benavides trial, a former San Antonio attorney. So this is um, quite a fall from grace for this individual. Yes, it really is. This this has uh, been a case that has been uh, going on since about since November of 2015. Mark Benavides is a former San Antonio attorney who is slated to go on trial at the end of the month on accusations of having sex with female clients. And he has been indicted again. This happened late last week, where a Bear County grand jury on Thursday indicted him on four counts of continuous trafficking of persons in connection with alleged incidents with four women that occurred between 2012 and 2015. Now, again, he's been indicted on numerous counts of various charges in a case that has grown in severity Since that first arrest in November 2015, he's been accused of having sex with a child under 17, inducing a child under 18 to engage in a sexual performance, compelling prostitution from at least nine of his clients, all female. Now, today, some of those charges have been dismissed for one reason or another, but right now, he has five open cases against him two charges of sex assault of a child, one charge of sexual assault, and two charges of continuous trafficking of persons. And this is all according to Bear County records. Yeah, let me jump in, Elizabeth, because I'm getting a, a little confused here. Um, you know, most people obviously should be well aware that um, when it comes to sexual relations or sexual acts, there is an age of consent, and that's sometimes different from state to state. So when something involves a child, obviously that's a crime. But we started off saying these are accusations of having sex with female clients, and now we're talking about trafficking. Um, could you fill in the blanks there for me? I'm a little lost. Sure. Basically, this is about prostitution. Um, Women who employed Benavides as their attorney in prostitution cases from 2009 to 2012 told authorities that he coerced them into having sex to help lessen their legal problems or to get their cases dismissed. And that the alleged encounters took place at his law office, in motels, his car, and at the courthouse, according to an arrest warrant affidavit that was filed before the original indictment. So, you know, uh, basically my understanding is as he is representing these um, women who vary in age, uh, for, you know, uh, on allegations of, of prostitution, he has been accused of basically, you know, uh, coercing them into having sexual relations with him as either a payment, you know, for his services, or um, it could be something even more, you know, nefarious as far as like, uh, you know, um, Basically, I won't represent you unless you do these things. So um, it's been uh, quite uh, a uh, it's been covered a lot in the in uh, the uh, San Antonio and Bear County press since 2015. Now, in and because of that, in June, Benavides was granted a change of venue to have his criminal cases heard in Wilson County. Um, and that's in Floresville. That's about 30 miles southeast of the, the San Antonio Center. So it's not very far, but uh, 
you know, at, at the time that this request was made, his attorney, Monica Guerrero, uh, told visiting judge Dick Alcala that in addition to intense media coverage, she sought the change because some clients alleged Benavides had sex with them in at least two rooms in the Cadena Reeves Justice Center, which is the criminal courthouse. And these are rooms that are used by jurors. And she told the judge that she didn't want jurors doing their own investigating as far as, you know, checking out the room. Wow. So so the rooms and the facilities that might have been used for a trial in that original location were involved, perhaps, in the crimes being tried. So then they obviously wanted to change the venue. Yes. You know, in the these courtrooms in the Cadena Reeves uh, Justice Center, they're all pretty much laid out the same way. When you walk through the double doors on either side of the double doors, there's two sets of double doors. So on either side, you have witness rooms. And then there's also conference rooms that are actually in the back offices of, you know, around where the judge, where the judge has chambers and where they have their other offices. So, you know, the attorney, you know, didn't really want jurors, uh, as I said earlier, doing their own investigating. So there's, like I said, it's this, this has been quite the fall for Benavides. He's, he's 48 years old. He is a Democrat who has run unsuccessfully for local judicial positions before all this happened. He uh, graduated in 1997 from Texas Wesleyan University Law School. He's been licensed to practice law since 2000, and he ran a private law practice in San Antonio. His uh, primary areas of practice uh, are listed uh, on the uh, State Bar of Texas website as business, criminal, family, real estate, and juvenile issues. But since these uh, indictments have come out, um, Benavides no longer can practice law in the state of Texas. He resigned December 13, 2016, in lieu of disciplinary action, according to the State Bar of Texas. So now uh, what is before him in the next couple of weeks, he will be tried by a judge and jury in Wilson County. So, um, and these charges, several of these charges carry stiff penalties. For example, the continuous trafficking of persons charge that he has four counts of that just happened um, this last week, uh, is a first degree felony punishable by 25 to 99 years or life in prison. And that's just one of the charges. Yeah. Yeah. That's just one. I mean, you know, just, just to give you an example, you know, of, of the severity of, of these particular charges. Um, In a hearing on Friday, uh, prosecutors asked judge Alcala to set Benavides is bail at $1.5 million. And this is interesting. Um, the attorney for uh, Benavides told the court that her client has been compliant with his bond conditions. He's been on GPS monitoring pretty much nonstop since, you know, all of this happened. And uh, she said that the family is almost out of money. I believe her quote was, the family literally has sold everything, she said, adding that Benavides already has paid bonds that total about $625,000. So um, because, uh, I, I, you know, the judge seemed to, you know, in, in looking at the record, you know, in front of him, uh, he decided to set new bail for Benavides at $75,000. And he kept the GPS monitoring restrictions and read him his rights. And he was taken into custody by Bear County Sheriff's Office deputies. And this happened on Friday. That's quite a difference in bail requests. Yes, it is. $1.5 million down to $75,000. Wow. Right. But it's, I mean, but you also, I guess you also have to take into consideration that, that, you know, if his attorney is saying that, you know, they don't really have much more that, that they can, they can sell off, you know, to, to get his bail. 
you know, I, I think she did a pretty good sales job with the judge on that. Sounds like it. Yeah. For him to, to drop from 1.5 million down to 75. But, you know, uh, he, Benavides has shown up each, I, he's been in every hair, hearing that I have, that I have gone to that, that has his name on. And, um, he's, you know, the, he's com- complied with the GPS monitoring restrictions. I believe the only thing that he, um, uh, is really able to do is, is to go out and, and, uh, help his father. I believe he's helping his father with the business that his father runs, but basically is, is, is pretty much monitored 24 seven. And, um, so it'll be interesting to see, uh, if he has been able to, to make more bail and, uh, get, um, you know, get out of, get out of jail this time before his, his trial starts. Uh, and interesting is that, uh, each, of these cases against Benavides are going to be tried separately. And the first one is set for trial March 26th in Wilson County. So all those different charges that you talked about at the beginning of our discussion, those are going to be each their own trial with this first one starting March 26th. Yes. Yes. So of those, he's probably going to have like, he's got, like I said earlier, he's got five open cases. So I'm assuming that that is going to be five, you know, different trials, unless he decides, and, and if he's allowed to, at this point, to maybe uh, negotiate, you know, maybe his attorney negotiates a plea bargain with the state, uh, that maybe they can take care of some of those, some of those charges against him. Like I said, you know, uh, there have been a couple of charges already that have been dismissed for one reason or another, but he still has five open cases. So it'll be interesting to see how, how that happens uh, moving forward. Certainly once this trial starts, again, it's gonna be starting on the 26th at the end of this month. And it's likely, the judge said last week that it could last up to about three weeks. So you'll be hearing more about that for sure. Yeah. We'll- be hearing uh, on this next episode, um, if not a little bit further after that, um, because of the starting date of this first trial for the case we just finished talking about, we'll be hearing about updates for probably both of these in the coming weeks. So once again, I've been speaking with uh, San Antonio Express News courts reporter Elizabeth Zavala, my partner in crime, as it were, every week here on the docket. Well, Elizabeth, uh, thanks for the information. Uh, Have a good week and uh, we'll check with you again next week for another episode. All right. Thanks a bunch, Chance. We'll talk then. And thanks to San Antonio Express News courts reporter Elizabeth Zavala for joining me for this week's episode of The Docket, a new weekly interview program covering law and crime in San Antonio from ExpressNews.com, brought to you by our sponsor, the Law Offices of Pat Maloney. 